I just thought I'd tell you that. Because <laughs> I, I saw some of you looking like you wanted to do it, and you didn't know whether you should do it or not. <laughs> but uh, I tell you, I love happy songs, and I love happy words. I love beautiful songs. I love beautiful words. I love songs that lift us up. I love words that inspire us. I just love words. They are powerful, so powerful. And I'm going to speak to your heart this morning just briefly on the subject, words that inspire, words that inspire. Turn with you in your Bibles to the first epistle of John. We've been in the first epistle of John for some time now, and I don't know how much longer we'll be there, but we're going to go back to chapter 2, and we'll begin reading in just a moment in verse 12. And while you're locating that passage of Scripture, I, I want to share something with you. The Lord just quickened my spirit this morning before the service. It began in Pastor Lee and I's prayer time together. And he quickened my spirit and said what is needed in this day for the family of God more than anything else is a message of hope. And so the Lord willing, I'm going to bring a message of hope for you, for all of us, for Rocky Hill Baptist Church, for every born-again child of God, and for our beloved nation, America. I sense that there is a lack of hope among the people. They, they are struggling, and, and pe many people are at the point, I, I don't feel that there's any hope. I don't see signs of hope in my life. I don't see signs of hope in, in our nation. What, what can we do? There's nothing we can do, but there is. There's a message of hope. So pray about that this coming week. 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse 12. Listen to these beautiful and powerful words. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known Him who is from the beginning. And I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. There's our hope. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists, or the spirit of Antichrist, or spirits of Antichrist, have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were really of us to begin with. That's a powerful statement. But as you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the very beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He has promised us, eternal life. Praise God. These things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone should teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. And now, little children, abide in Him, that when He appears, 
we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of God. What a powerful passage of Scripture. Words have power to bless or to curse. The book of Proverbs in chapter 18, verse 21 says these words, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it, those who love the tongue and what it does, will eat of its fruit. Literally, you will end up eating your own words. Powerful, powerful thought indeed. Words kill and words give life. It's up to you and I to choose which words we use. I've often thought about this. If we would all just do this simple exercise every day, put our mind in gear before we open our mouth. <laughs> I was in my college days, I was hitchhiking back and forth to college and home, and I got a ride, and I looked on the dash of the car, uh, and it said, put your mind in gear before you open your mouth. I didn't say a whole lot. <laughs> I didn't say a whole lot. I was afraid to say a whole lot. I thought about saying a lot, but every time I thought about it, it'd get it up right here, Julia, and it wouldn't go any further. Why? Because my mind checked my tongue. <laughs> Amen. Uh, words are powerful. Now, now think about this with me for just a moment. Death and life are in the power of this thing right here. How ironic that Brother Mike, Christopher, would have a message on words as well. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6 says that we need to let our speech be with grace and seasoned with salt so that we may know how to talk with each other and to one another. I want you to think about that for just a moment. If our speech is with grace, seasoned with salt, we will know how to speak to one another. Have you ever said anything? Now remember you're in the house of God. Have you ever said anything that you wished you could take it back? Yeah, I see heads not bobbing up and down here. Guess what? You can't take it back. I can't take it back. What comes out of here is done and cannot be retracted. Oh, how I look back on my life as you look back for just a fleeting moment on your life. And you remember those moments when you said something in the heat of the moment. And now that you look at it, you say, oh, if I could just get that back. If I could just get that back. What was happening? There was power of death and life in the ton. And it's up to us to choose our words. I want you to look at this passage of Scripture, 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 through 14 specifically, first of all, words of encouragement. Do you need a word of encouragement this morning? Well, I want you to know there, there is a word of encouragement for you. I, I think about the Apostle Paul uh, who was cast into prison and all of his epistles back to the church, the early believers, were words of encouragement words of encouragement. And as John writes to the church here in the epistle of 1 John, he's speaking words of encouragement. They are powerful words. They are words inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, anointed in the life of the servant of God, spoken in the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, and it blesses all of those who read it even still yet today, even this morning, even this morning. Words are important. They're the essence of our life. What we say comes out of the heart. Jesus put it this way, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What comes out of your mouth comes out of the contents of your heart and of my heart. Yet we have the choice to say something good or to say something bad. 
And so we need to be very careful. And that's why this passage in Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech be with grace and seasoned with salt so that you may know how to converse with one another. Did you see the morning's paper? In that paper, there was an article about people talking to one another through texting, standing outside of a building and just communicating through viable modern technology. My fear about that is this. I have nothing against cell phones. I have one. <laughs> I don't text because I'm too old to text. And I'll just carry the text with me. <laughs> That's a good text, isn't it? Yeah. My, my concern is that we're losing the art of communication. We're losing the art of communication. I'm talking about verbal communication. We're raising a generation of kids that will not know how to communicate verbally with each other. What do we do about that? I don't have all the answers. I'm not sure they have any answers, but I'm, I'm, I'm disturbed by what I see and what I sense. We can't afford to lose the most powerful thing at our disposal, and that's verbal communication. Verbal communication. And look what, what John does in this passage. It's a beautiful thing. He refers to the chronological age as well as the spiritual age here in this text of our Scripture this morning. He says, little children, that is, newborn ones in Jesus Christ. I want, I want to say a word of encouragement to you. Little children. No, notice what he says. I want to encourage you, little children, for your sins have been forgiven you. For your sins have been forgiven you. Hold your place there and go with me to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Beginning in verse 1, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with righteousness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with the truth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You know what the greatest blessing in all the world is? The greatest blessing in all the world is that your sins and my sins are forgiven. That was mighty weak. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Yes. There's no greater blessing in all of the world than that. And he says, my little children, I write to you. Now, remember, he's, he's referring to the chronological age, but he's also referring to the spiritual age. And it's a very great term of endearment. My little children, I want you to know that forgiveness is the primary blessing in the Word of God and in your life. All your sins... Heal all your diseases. Redeem your life from destruction. Forgiveness is not only a primary blessing.